Well, again, these letters were targeting some of the swing voters on this issue. And all reports for the preceding two weeks was that this was going to come down to a small handful of votes determining whether or not um, success uh, was possible in passing the legislation. So the information that these members of Congress had in their office on the day that the vote was cast, June 26th, uh, Friday of that week, um, was that the American Association of University Women, the NAACP, veterans groups were opposed to the legislation, uh, which if they relied upon that could have actually resulted in the defeat of the legislation. So again, it goes back to the question of why didn't Foner notify the members of Congress that this information uh, was inaccurate, that it had been manufactured, uh, and that uh, they should not be casting their vote based upon these misrepresentations. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, we, we should have done that. Um, uh, it wasn't done for any other reason than we should have shouldn't we should have done it, and that our responsibilities were to make sure that the third party groups, the um, uh, community organizations who had this awful fraud perpetrated upon them were informed immediately by us, a lot telling them our responsibility and Bonner and Associates' responsibility alone. Um, this was uh, something we were responsible for, and our employee did that, and he shouldn't have, and we should have caught it, and we fired him. Um, but and, uh, um, I would say from this experience, Chairman Markey, uh, we would, going forward, immediately inform the members of Congress. I have no knowledge of whether the members were swing votes or not, We're, we don't lobby. We just go and um, uh, get, or get advocacy work done. Well, th the reality is that they were. And the reality was that this was going to come down to a small handful of votes. And so, you know, miscommunication of information to these members uh, went right to the heart of our ability to have a, a debate on the, on the facts. Um, of whether or not this energy uh, legislation was good for the country or not. And so, again, organizations of this nature uh, uh, have a very heavy moral uh, and political influence in our country. So, Mr. Shelton, Mr. Bonner said that your organization, the NAACP, was notified as soon as possible. When were you notified? The vote was on June uh, 26. The, uh, the fraud was identified on June 22nd or 23rd. When was the NAACP notified? My office first heard about this on July 31st, which, and I, am the, I run the government affairs office for the NAACP that, is, that oversees all governmental interactions between the NAACP and the U.S. Congress. And we did not hear from any, any outside organization. We heard from news outlets asking us what we thought about the fraudulent activities that had occurred. So, Mr. Bonner, what do you have to say to Mr. Shelton about um, that long delay in notifying, notifying them that the, the good name of the NAACP had uh, been used uh, to, def to attempt to defeat uh, this uh, clean energy legislation? Um, Mr. Chairman, on um, June 29th, uh, one of my staff people had a very lengthy conversation of which we have a record um, that the conversation took place with the vice president of the Charlottesville NAACP, at which time we apologized for what we did. We um, informed the, the vice president of what went on, that Bonner and Associates was responsible for this, and we told her all about this. On June 29th, three days after the vote had occurred? Yes, sir. Now, what do you have to respond to that, Mr. Shelton? It is outrageous. That very well they would wait that long to try to correct the record on a process that is so sacred to our very democracy, sir. Very well indeed it is outrageous, and they should be ashamed of themselves for carrying on this kind of fraudulent behavior. Okay. Ms. Matz, when did you find out that the use of your organization's name had uh, been uh, misappropriated and uh, used to attempt to, defend, to defeat uh, the Waxman Markey Clean Energy Bill? Right. We actually, at the at National AW, found out even later than the NAACP did. It was the first week of August. Uh, and we found out uh, as a result of a newspaper article from Charlottesville. 
Uh, it was literally something that came up on a Google search, believe it or not. So, Mr. Bonner, what do you say to Ms. Matz in terms of that long delay, all the way from June 22nd to the first week of August? And this uh, organization, the American Association of University Women, still don't know that uh, uh, their name has uh, been used to defeat uh, uh, clean energy legislation. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, what I would say to her is we should have found the national organization immediately. The person, uh, this temporary employee that did the fraud had actually made up a chapter that was no longer there, um, and we attempted to find that chapter in Virginia, and we didn't. Um, we should have contacted the national immediately. Um, when we talked on the phone, because um, uh, um, we, the AAUW contacted us, and I personally um, spoke and apologized for what happened and explained that Bonner and Associates was responsible and that we had fired the person involved, but we should have gotten a hold of the national organization right away, and I apologize for that. We, we wouldn't do that again. Ms. Matz, what is your response? Well, I, I find it regrettable that I had to be the one to reach out. Um, I do appreciate the fact that when I did, there was a conversation that was held. But there's a couple of things that, that I would question. Number one, as a grassroots lobbying firm, I find it hard to believe that they were not involved in the targeting of members because grassroots folks worth their salt do targeting in terms of figuring out who they need to spend their time on to try and influence votes. The other thing I would say is that not knowing when the vote is seems also a little disingenuous because how could you know when to stop doing your grassroots advocacy work if you didn't know when the vote was? Uh, so it seems, again, there's some disingenuousness going on here. And for our members, quite frankly, it's outrageous. The fact that they use the name of a dead member, the fact that this was someone who that particular branch, had, when it used to be in existence, uh, was very highly regarded. Uh, you know, our members are incredibly distressed. One of the things that AEW relies on is not only a good name, but the fact that we have women who come up to the Hill every week that Congress is in session to talk to members of Congress. And the fact that they now are worried in some respects that when they go into an office that someone won't believe that this is actually our position uh, is incredibly distressing to them.